Never before in history has so much taken place and it is directly aligned with scripture, with prophecy, with the depictions and the descriptions of the end times. Homo Deus, a brief history of tomorrow. Yuval Noah Harari is this guy's name. He's an Israeli historian and a tenured professor at the Department of History at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He's the author of the international bestseller, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. In 2015, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, uh, selected his book for his online book club. Mark invited his followers to read what he describes as a big history narrative of human civilization. This book is a brief history of tomorrow and the following excerpts from a jaw-dropping speech are utterly shocking that Yuval gave to the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs this uh, this February. I'm going to read these quotes and you're going to see them on your screen. I mean, this stuff is mind-boggling. The revolution of the 21st century will not be in our tools in our vehicles, in our society, or in our economy. The really big revolution will be in ourselves, in humanity. The main products of the 21st century economy will be bodies, brains, and minds. We are now learning how to hack not just computers, but how to hack organisms, and in particular how to hack humans. We are learning how to engineer them and how to manufacture them. I think we all get the implication and what in the world that actually means. That was only one quote. We have several more to go through. So it is very likely that within a century or two, Homo sapiens, as we, as we have known it for thousands of years, will disappear. Not because, like in some Hollywood science fiction movie, the robots will come and kill us, but rather because we will use technology to upgrade ourselves, or at least some of us. Ah, into something different, something which is far more different from us than we are different from the Neanderthals. They are literally talking about creating another species of human being using genetic engineering and technology. That is plain English, and that is exactly what it means. In pl- sorry, in plain English, that's exactly what it means. I'm, I'm a little heated, and I always <laughs> I twisted my words there for a second. In the coming century, humankind may have the ability to, first of all, replace natural selection with intelligent design as the fundamental principle of the evolution of life, not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design will be the main driving force of the evolution of life. Do you see where evolution has led us to? This ideology that we're just an upgrade from monkeys, or we came from a monkey's butt, I mean, this is what they have fed us, supposedly, if we if we are supposed to accept this about evolution. It brings humanity to this point, and that is the point that they want it to be at. That is the point that they want to literally manufacture and alter life, as we know it on Earth. Humankind, mankind, how we are today, in a few years could literally be no more. And it's not that there was a doomsday scenario, it's that they just came and altered our genomes. Now, I'm not going to be willing to do that, so I probably won't be around here. (laughs) I don't know about you guys. Another danger is on the social level. Due to these new technologies, we may end up with the most unequal society in human history. Because for the first time in history, it will be possible to translate economic inequality into biological inequality. This is a revert into the slave days. Oh, but they're all chanting for equality while not even recognizing that the people who, they're, who, is, who are funding them are the people who are going to create enormous inequality. 
In the 21st century, this may change. Using the new technologies, it will be possible basically to split humankind into biological castes. Once you open such a gap, it becomes almost impossible to close it. We're talking about superhumans. A lot of people have warned about this over the years, but not many wanted to listen. I think it's all time. I think it's time we all started paying attention to it. Because you have the UK who's working on creating designer babies. You have the US also working on the same technology. You have China who's doing the same thing. So many countries are already working on ways to alter the germline of humanity. To alter DNA. And as I've said before, once it is done, there is no coming back. Another related danger is that even with bioengineering and things like that, we will see an extremely unequal society as elites and states lose their interest and lose their incentive to invest in the health, education, and welfare of the masses. The 19th and 20th centuries were the ages of the masses. The masses were the central force in politics and in society. That is taken directly off the Georgia Guidestones. Not really. But what it means, yes. It was taken directly off the Georgia Guidestones. They don't need us anymore. Do you see why this energy and green and climate change movement is so important to their agenda of totalitarian control? Almost all advanced countries, regardless of political regime, invested heavily in health, education, and welfare of the masses. Even dictatorships like Nazi Germany or like the Soviet Union built massive systems of education, welfare, and health for the masses, hospitals, schools, paying teachers and nurses, vaccinations, sewage systems, and all that. Why did they do it? Not because Stalin and Hitler were very nice people, but because they knew that they needed the masses. Hitler and the Nazis knew perfectly well that if they wanted Germany to be a strong nation without, uh, excuse me, with a strong army and a strong economy, they needed millions of poor Germans to serve as soldiers in the army and as workers in the factories and offices, which is why they had a very good incentive to invest in their education and health. What are we seeing today? But we may be leaving the age of the masses. We may be entering a new era in which the masses are just not useful for anything. They will be transformed from the working class into the useless class. Oh, wow. This is shocking. It is very likely that even if there are new jobs, most of the unemployed masses will not be able to make the transition. This is what I keep telling you guys about universal basic income. It's a welfare state. How long are these elites going to keep, keep individuals or keep the masses alive? Military, jobs replaced by uh, autonomous technologies like drones and cyber warfare, self-driving cars and taxi drivers, uh, truck drivers and bus drivers, se uh, excuse me, self-driving cars will replace taxi drivers, truck drivers and bus drivers, medicine, computers and artificial intelligence. Can you imagine all of the jobs, all of the nurses jobs gone because AI? Can you imagine doctors Gone because of AI. Can you imagine truck drivers? Gone because of AI. Artificial intelligence declare, uh, declares war on man with by default. Convenience is a weapon, and they're using it as such. They're wielding that thing like a sword, and most people don't even see it. So we may be facing in the 21st century a completely new kind of inequality, which we have never seen before in human history. On the one hand, the emergence of a new upgraded elite of superhumans enhanced by bioengineering. This is not con some conspiracy theorist. This is a person who is in the same circle with Mark Zuckerberg. 
So we may be facing in the 21st century a completely new kind of inequality, which we have never seen before in human history. On the one hand, the emergence of a new upgraded elite of superhumans, enhanced by bioengineering and brain-computer interfaces and things like that. And on the other hand, a new, massive, useless class, a class that has no military or economic usefulness, and therefore also no political power. Keep going. That one's pretty self-explanatory, yeah? Hundreds of years ago, say in the European Middle Ages, authority came down from the clouds, from God. You wanted to know who, sh who should rule the country or what to do, whether in terms of national policy or in terms of your personal life. Authority to answer these questions came from God. Well, guess what? God still answers those questions, and he, is still ha he still has the authority. I don't care how much you upgrade yourself. He is still in control. He knew this was going to happen. Knowledge will increase in the last days. I mean, this is a pretty good example of how knowledge has increased. Man thinks it's God. We've seen that before. For example, if you think about homosexuality, why was it considered a terrible sin? Because God said so. Because the Bible said so. And these were the highest authorities in the ethical field. Then came humanism, which said, no, the highest authority is human feelings. Feelings. Okay. okay. Whether it makes humans feel good or bad, if two men are in love and they don't harm anybody else, both of them feel very good about their relationship. What could possibly be wrong with it? We don't care what's written in the Bible or what the Pope says. We care only about human feelings. Feelings. So this was the ethical revolution of humanism, placing human feelings at the top of the ethical pyramid. Feelings. Humanism. You see, that, that explains what's going on today around, in, around the world. In America, obviously. Everybody's feelings are hurt. Grow up. We have to recognize the warfare that is being... We have to recognize the warfare that is coming against us all, literally. The masses, everybody. Mainly the Christians. But again, we have to recognize what's really going on behind the scenes. They're planning to upgrade themselves to some superhuman, super intelligent beings. And back to the beginning we go. This same lie. Fed to humanity by the serpent or by Satan is still prevalent today. These individuals are going to think that they can upgrade themselves literally to become some sort of superhuman. Their words, not mine. We'll see what God says about that. I've read the end of the book. The main aim of a humanist education is to teach people to think for themselves. You go to a humanist educational establishment, whether it's kindergarten or university, and you ask the teacher, the professor, what do you try to teach the kids, the students? The professor would say, oh, I try to teach history or economics or physics. But above all, I try to teach them to think for themselves because this is the highest authority. What do you think? What do you feel? This is humanism. The big revolution in authority of the last two or three centuries is what do you feel? That is supposedly the uh, biggest revolution of the past two or three centuries is what do you feel? My goodness. And now we are on the verge of a new revolution. Authority is shifting back to the clouds, to the Microsoft cloud, to the Google cloud, to the Amazon cloud. Data and data processing is the new source of authority. Don't listen to the Bible and don't listen to your feelings. Listen to Amazon. Listen to Google. They know how you feel. They know how you better than you know yourself. And they can make better decisions on your behalf than you can. This is shocking. This is utterly shocking. 
just recently we covered a uh, report that showcased that these big tech companies were militarizing themselves. Building robotics for DARPA, for the U.S. government. They were building um, all sorts of things. I mean, Amazon. The t- uh, what's his name? Jeff Bozo. That's what we call him around here. Jeff Bozo. Obviously, it's Bezos, but Bozo. He it, it was inside of this massive, gigantic robot. And, of course, we're witnessing the rise of this militant AI. And whether you see it or not, it's a war against humanity. It's a war against us. The central idea of this new worldview, which you can call dataism, because it invests authority in data, is that given enough data, especially biometric data about a person, and given enough computing power, Google or Facebook can create an algorithm that knows you better than you know yourself. We have given these companies too much power, people. Too much power. And now they think they can play God. If you want to see it in action, you just need to go to Israel, which is now leading the world in algorithmic, excuse me, algorithmic occupation. I think it was the commander of the Central Command of Israel a year ago who said, I am also Israeli. We are the world champions in occupation. It is not a very well-known fact, but it is very interesting that the Israeli occupation has been transformed more and more into an algorithmic occupation. It is based on total surveillance, and it is based on more and more sophisticated algorithms that follow basically everything. The drones take footage of everything. If I pick up the phone and call Hebron, somebody is picking up that call and analyzing it, not a human looking for patterns, patterns, patterns. Really? You see, we we have to understand the new communism. The old communism came in the form of overt communism, overt surveillance. You can't fly there, blah, 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 communism, okay? But now it's covert. Covert surveillance. Covert flying bans or travel bans. And I'm not trying to make a reference to Trump, just saying in general. This is this covert communist takeover. And a lot of people are are not even really recognizing it. But in large part, it has to do with technology and artificial intelligence. This is something that will affect everybody. I shouldn't say will because it already is. They are analyzed. If you have an Amazon account, they're reading the expressions to offer you the next thing you should buy. Think about how creepy that is. Every day I leave my house and go to the olive grove to water it. Day after day after day after day. Then one day I do something different. Makes sound. The eye in the sky opens. Something has broken the pattern. Something is happening here. And this is all done algorithmically. It is very different to resist an occupation if you can't organize. And to organize you need to communicate. And all communication is under surveillance. It is very difficult to organize. Massive surveillance from the, from the clouds. By drones. By Google, Facebook, Amazon. These massive technology companies. In short term, it's very likely that humans will stay in control. But in the longer terms, that algorithms may become so sophisticated that humans just can't understand them. And authority will really shift. Not from the masses to a small human elite, but even from the elite to the algorithms. That is an artificial intelligence takeover in a nutshell. And they've already allowed the algorithms to create themselves today. In our world today, that's already happening. They're allowing the uh, the artificial intelligence to run its own programs. On its own, totally. No no human is inputting anything into the computer. This is already happening today. But mind you, the elite are never going to just hand over the control to the algorithms because we have to remember the spiritual world in this all. Because they're the ones who are attacking the Bible. They're the ones who are saying this God figure doesn't exist. We're God! 
So the whole time that they're trying to say God doesn't exist, they're trying to take the authority away from God. It's a little bit of an oxymoron if you think about it. So while they're saying he doesn't exist, they're, te- they're trying to take the authority away from a non-existent figure. You see how that's working out for them? Not very well. And it sure as hell won't work out because we've read the end of the book. That's all I got for you. God bless and carry on. Go Unlimited. Act now and save almost 50% on a yearly membership. Use promo code SUBPRO15. Find out more at christiantruther.com info.